Thanks for tuning back in. I'm Tommy Campbell, still bald, still in my basement, and still getting used to writing 2024 on all the invoices I sent to George Soros and China for this show. Things are heating up with Iowa around the corner, and Trump supporters are making a totally bonkers Space Force prediction that's one of the most laughable takes to date from the defeated former president's mindless base. I'll be getting into the Space Force secret agenda, Vivek's change of plans, Casey DeSantis taking the reins from her husband, who's really a malfunctioning animatronic program by Mike Lindell's tech team, there's a new genuine page from Lauren Boebert's book, and more, but first, this. You should get married as young as possible and have as many kids as possible, period. Reject the siren song of modernity. Now, some parents are probably, ooh, I, I don't like that, you know. Uh, they should basically, you know, they should go get a job first. You're wrong. I'm sorry, honestly. We are on the verge of a population collapse in this country. Every day I receive emails from young women filled with regret. Charlie Kirk is concerned about a population collapse, but he also wants to stop all immigrants. He's not trying to promote more kids. He's trying to promote more right-wingers having kids, as many as possible so they can vote Republican before they can legally drink a beer. America. Having a kid is a huge responsibility. And if your head is not on straight when you have one, you and your family will struggle in every way. If you can, try and get educated, travel, find yourself, get work, have some stability, then do the marriage and the kids to give you and your family the best chance. Because life ain't easy and life with kids is much tougher. Eyes too close together, Charlie Kirk is 30, makes millions every year and has one child. But he's telling a crowd of very young people to reproduce as soon as possible. I can't stress enough that once you have kids, that's it, that's your life. And if it's not, then you shouldn't have had them because you're not prioritizing the life you decided to bring into this world. It is pouring MAGA tears. Happy New Year, wishing you an excellent 2024. Please join the best subscribers on YouTube in the comments and laugh along while I mock the latest and stupid and more. You know, the toilets and private jets are very small. That's why Epstein liked bringing me on his plane. He knew there was at least one thing he wouldn't be sharing with me. This is really cool. Here's another insurrectionist that got a attic photo shoot to cry MAGA tears about the find out phase of her attempt to overthrow the government. I think most of her fellow Republicans with ankle monitors like the Boberts and Lindells likely rocked the jogging pants to cover it up. But the times are changing, the stupid is compounding, and you gotta show it off like a badge of honor ridiculous. It's noted that Rachel Powell, this lady, has been under supervision but allowed to work and go outside the home under certain conditions. She was accused of repeatedly violating the conditions of her supervised release. She is not being credited for time spent in jail as she has spent no time in jail. Mega tears. The election, I believe, was stolen, but we know that. Space Force has it all. Trump has all the, all the information. This is what we're dealing with. This is the level of crazy that's out there and it's not a one-off, but still try not to laugh while this lady throws out the lunacy because it's going to get weirder. It's going to be overturned. What do you think Space Force has? Space Force is a military branch of the, you know, just like the army, the, you know, all the military and they literally walk up here Walk up here. Not only is she happily giving her airtime, she's taking orders from her. Did one of these people behind her let one rip and she just wanted to step away? It is just bizarre. And this dumpster fire network is happy to go run with it. And there's more. A lot more. They literally, the night of the election, they literally watched the election be stolen. They know they watermarked the ballots. They know exactly what happened with every ballot. They know what fake ballots, all right? They saw, they knew the election switches. They know what countries were involved. They know, they followed the money. They know what every politician that's been paid off. They know there's, um, there was 260,000, 269,000 uh, sealed indictments, but I think it might even be up to 500,000 sealed indictments. Watermark the ballots. Did they do this with some top secret Evian satellites? Don't tell MTG. 260,000, 269, 500,000. She's just checking out numbers. And again, according to her, the Space Force has all these secrets. 
I think this is the first MAGA crazy I've seen that might be, that might be two out there for Mike Lindell. And I believe that we're going to have an emergency broadcast and the military is going to come in with martial law. And we are going to be shown eight hours on, eight hours off of videos for seven days, the world. And they're going to be showing us taped uh, tribunals, taped confessions. And the world is going to be awakened to what's really going on with the deep state. Eight hours on, eight hours off. The world will be watching this emergency broadcast. So in the middle of the playoffs or your Netflix binge, suddenly we're going to have Space Force hijacking our TVs to show us tape tribunals and confessions from politicians. Just, I, I, I just can't. It's so ridiculous. In 2019, the United States Space Force Act was signed into law by President Donald Trump, establishing the U.S. Space Force as the first new independent military service since the Army forces were reorganized as the U.S. Air Force in 1947. Trump was behind Space Force. He was active during the election while he was in power. And they have all the secrets and the truth. None of this makes sense. But her confidence is so frightening. You're never going to change your mind about anything. And again, that's what we're dealing with. And her vote counts as much as yours. Whether Trump stays or goes, the ignorance is compounding. And these people will continue to vote for the biggest wacko spoon feeding them the nonsense they crave. And then when that crazy person gets in power, it just compounds even further for coming home in Washington when he was serving to come call his family or go back to his office so he could talk to us and talk to his family. And so, you know, I just reject that. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous. We as a family, you know, and we talked about this earlier, your kids grow up so fast. We have seven, five, and three. Any Before plans for we more? Know, Seven, five, and three. It's strange that she refers to her kids in this numerical format. When I talk about my son, I say Joey, not six, because he's a real person, not a character on Stranger Things. Uh, well, buckle your seatbelt. I think I'm good with seven, five, and three right now. I'm trying to, you know, get from point A to point B. So you're not trying. You're, you're trying to get to point A. Point a, point a, point a, point a point point yeah, let me just make sure I clarify that. Yes. Trying to get, a, you know, a seven, five, and a three-year-old out the door every day with hats and gloves and what have you is is a challenge. But, oh, you make uh, it look effortless. No, the real challenge is getting Ron's boots on because that's probably a family event. Got to get him on the big stool, drag those suckers over, slide them over his tiny feet. And a cook? Is he a cook? He is a good cook. He has cooked. I don't think you're going to cook. I love cooking. I am not good at cooking, but I enjoy the process of doing it. And I like to have my little helpers in the kitchen with me. So uh, we're going to attempt to cook. Ron loves governing. He's not good at it. I think it's cute that she calls him a little helper. Not exactly helping the narrative there, Casey. I wonder if Ron cooks as well as he eats, because this is just like... Ugh. Okay, we're gonna, yeah, you guys, um, so you do pastrami, corned beef, turkey, what else? Pastrami. Yeah. The one you have like a big sandwich, it's like 23 bucks. Which one is that? I don't want it. I mean, stuffing it all in with the chipmunk cheeks and then talking with a full mouth and shoving more in. This is like an episode of Man vs. Food. Thank you. I see every tip from pennies to dollars. They are hugely appreciated and help make this show possible. If you love what I do here and you can afford to help out, throw me a buck with the PayPal link in the pinned comment or drop me a super thanks with this button. And please take two seconds after this video to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. These things are free and help the show grow. Thank you. We're doubling and tripling down on our spending in a much more targeted way that's going to deliver, you mark my words on this, a surprise at the Iowa caucus on January 15th. I think we're going to shock the world, actually. And so I'm running this campaign in the same way that I would run a company with an actual IQ and an actual brain not taken for a ride by political consultants. And I think that's going to lead us to ultimately success here. I love where we're sitting right now, Pete, where the mainstream media has got our expectations low, hanging me in fourth place. I think if you take where the mainstream media's polling narrative is of having me just in the high single digits in Iowa, we're going to shatter that. And I'm going to leave the rest to January 15th. I think we have a good shot at winning the Iowa caucus. And if you look at the poll numbers right now, I know that would tell a different story. 
but it's because many of our supporters in this campaign, they're not polled. These are younger people, people who have not traditionally participated in the caucus, but who are inspired by a leader from the different generation. Well, let's check out some inspiration from his latest rally. I don't know if we should really consider 25 people in the back room of a pub a movement. I know he likes to talk about shattering expectations and the youth being interested, but if you're going to push that, then don't post videos with minimal youth in it. There's a solid amount of gray hair here. At least two out of the 25 are his protection detail. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Well, that's where you're, you're going, buddy. I mean, this is the best he could do. She's not even looking at him. Back to him for an hour. This was an hour long. This fellow's second guessing his hat that he had to put on the widest setting. You know, I know hats. I'm a hat guy. I'm bald. That is ridiculous. Vivek announced he's not going to be at the next debate because he claims some people at CNN have been unfair to him. Instead, he's going to do a podcast with Tim Pool so he can throw him some dosh to lob softballs at him and avoid any fact-checking. He's doing this because he has zero chance in Iowa, and he hopes he can get some MAGA cred for chickening out just like their diapered leader did. And if Trump gets back in, he'll have a White House gig because Don likes to get as many unqualified lunatics as possible in his orbit of stupid. Okay, so Vivek's rally goes under attack. We're talking diehard style. Choose your fighter. Is it going to be baby in the corner? Hat to the max guy. Uninterested youth taking a stretch break? Lady with her back to him. Uninterested youth number two teasing Don Jr. with a straw. See, they have other uses, Snorty. Who's it gonna be? Let me know in the comments. For those new to the show, I'm glad you found me. Thank you. For a year and a half, I've been reading genuine pages from my special copy of Lauren Boebert's book. This really is a ton of fun. I only do this once a week and it's been pretty wild. Let's get back to it. I did my best to dig my clear heels into the snowy bed of the truck, scrambling near the cab and away from the crazed street woman that was trying to board our F-150. I may have started this by throwing a can at her head, but I was not going to let this downtown Denver pirate get any further. The light was still red, and Jason had no clue what was going on back here because he took the rearview mirror off to use for partying when he realized he didn't have a CD case. The truth is, the only shoulder checks Jason is interested in is when we're drinking at the park. I know it's going to happen before he even calls it, because I see the girls playing frisbee or the ones using the big slide, and I know he's going to want to impress them with his shortcut muscles. But he does it off to the side and says, Babe, shoulder check! And we find a spot behind a tree bush or a trash can, and I dab concealer all over his moon back. Honestly, the makeup doesn't really help the roid boils, but he can't see the results when we're out in the wild, so just knowing he has a bit of cover-up gives him great confidence, and I think that's kind of hot. The confidence, not the blotchy sores. My two-tone paint job earned him another nickname with his prison buds. They call him Jason Pollock. To be fair, sometimes they call me Lauren Pollock, usually when we're finished. Well, at this moment, Mr. Pollock better slam the pedal on the right because the tramp is climbing into bed. That's something he'll often call out when I crawl on our futon for some us time, too. You hit me with a can and you're gonna pay, she screamed. No, you're gonna get paid, I shouted. She went from downtown Colorado, I am the captain now pirate, about to hijack our Ford, to money, money, money. Yes, as I've said, I've decided to run for politics, and I will make cans valuable. I pulled some change out of my pocket and threw it at her. Maybe a little too hard, but it's not like there were that many teeth to chip. I felt bad, though. I'm sorry. I just wanted to give you a taste of the good life for when I'm elected. Real change. Remember that. My name is Lauren Opal Bobert, the Florida-born daughter of Stan Lane and a government cheese-nibbling ring rat. It was like a fairy tale. If you've enjoyed this genuine page from Low Rent Boozburb's book, let me know in the comments and I'll see about reading another page sometime soon. Good lord, are all Dems as clueless as the ones I see on media and YouTube? You lot will believe anything. Mega tears. I don't know this guy. But in his bio, does it say he's a comedian? Was there ever a time he was funny? Because he's pretty boring and senseless now. Mega tears. This is where the Soros money goes to. No thanks. Mega tears. Uninterested youth number two teasing Don Jr. with a straw. See, they have other uses, snorty. Uh, is when we're drinking at the park. I know it's going to happen before he even calls it. Because I see the girls playing frisbee or the ones using the big slide. <laughs> The light was still red, and Jason had no clue what was going on back here because he took the rear view rear view.
Eight hours on, eight hours off. The world will be watching this emergency broadcast. So in the middle of the playoffs, your Netflix blinge, blinge. When I'm elected, real change. Remember that. My name is Lauren Opal Bobert, the Florida-born daughter of Stanley. <laughs> Government cheese and they like ring rat. Uh, ridiculous. Happy New Year. Wishing you an excellent 2024. Please join the best subscribers in YouTube on the comments. On the comments, in the comments, I'm a moron. To be fair, sometimes they call me Lauren Pollock. <laughs>